welcome to the first video of my acoustic guitar build, the Sugar SG-1. Now if you haven't watched it already, go and watch the video Anatomy of an Acoustic Guitar, the Sugar SG-1. And in there you will see uh, a pre-visualisation, CGI, of the guitar that I'm going to attempt to build. Now I never like making life easy for myself. <laughs> Because those are the plans. There are no hard copy plans for this guitar. Uh, the guitar is based on some traditional construction methods, so there's no big surprises in there. But there are a few little innovations, and it is very much my design. But I have not used a CAD program. I've used a CGI gaming program, really. It's, it's Blender. It runs on my Mac and it's great for doing what you've seen, it's great for producing videos like that, but not so great for CAD. There is no facility in it to export 2D plans and I guess I could cobble together some 2D plans from it. I could do some projections, what they call UV projections, uh, UV being a two-dimensional coordinate system. But even if I did that, I've got no way of printing them. <laughs> so, what I did last night, I sat down for an hour and a half and I created a spreadsheet with, full of technology here. I created a spreadsheet on my iPad with all the individual points around the front of the guitar and from that I'm going to make a template and I'm going to plot it on graph paper and I'm going to punch it straight through the graph paper onto some MDF to create my template. I'll just give you a flavour of what I did. So this is Blender. I'm having to use a mouse with my MacBook here because trying to use a, tr a trackpad when you can flip around the guitar and rotate it and move it. It's very difficult to do with a trackpad. You've got uh, three mouse buttons effectively and uh, you use all of them and the wheel to zoom in and out. And everything's here and you can see the results in the finalised video. It, it runs animation. This is just the first frame of the video and I've got the guitar oriented in the XZ plane with Y going into the screen. And what I can do is I can highlight the binding around the outside and I've got it on layer 2 and I can isolate that binding. And if I go into edit mode I can zoom in and I can pick out an individual point such as this point here on the edge of the guitar. Ignore those blue lines, they're the orthogonals. I've uh, got orthogonals switched on so you can see the orientation of each face. And up here we have the XZ coordinates of that particular point. And what I've done is I've gone through and every other point, every third point in places, every fourth point in places where they're very close together and I don't need such resolution. I have recorded all of these points in my spreadsheet and I'm going to plot these points. So, back to the matter in hand. You might not be able to see this on the video, but the, the zero line is here, and the, um, that's the zero x coordinate, and the zero z coordinate is somewhere way down here. We're at uh, 1 meter 25 here. <laughs> um, the, the, the guitar is modelled in 
real in meters it the coordinate system is uh, real world coordinates if you like it's all in millimeters meters etc but lack of foresight on my part meant that when I laid the guitar out in Blender I didn't think to try and line up the centre of the guitar on the zero line so the centre of the rosette is, is somewhere around here so I guess the first thing I'll mark is the centre of the rosette the radius of the hole and the centre line so the centre is at 63 millimetres and one metre, it sounds odd saying that, one metre, 587 millimetres. So that's 587, and that is 63. So we are there. And that's all I'm going to do to trace it, is to just press my very sharp bradawl through into the MDF underneath and we have our, our mark. So let's go into fast forward and I will begin the very long process of mapping out this guitar. Surprisingly, it's taken me as long to map it out on here as it did to transcribe it from within Blender. <laughs> and there we have a very faint outline which you won't be able to see on video, I'm pretty sure of that. First thing I'm going to do is draw in the centre line. Center line. And that's the rosette. I won't be cutting the rosette out of this template, that's just for reference really. The only thing I actually need is the centre. I will drill through so that I can mark the centre of the rosette onto the body of the guitar. I have my flexi curve. is not easy to see. It's 
telling that the flexi curve only just fits in that curve. I'm wondering whether that's a bit tight for the bending of the sides, but we'll see. is the profile of the guitar. And it's quite a slim guitar. This is meant to be my guitar and I like my parlour guitars and it is about 13 and a half inches wide. Four. I ought to know this. 34, 34 centimetres, 340 millimetres. I don't think I'm going to use the jigsaw to cut the whole thing out, I just can't see what I'm doing. So I'm going to put this on the scroll saw, but I'm going to rough it out with the jigsaw. limit of the scroll saw then it's a 16 inch scroll saw but because I uh, haven't trimmed it down to size first it didn't quite go so uh, hopefully this time I'll be able to get all the way around. The 
longest of journeys starts with the smallest of steps. I have a template. It's five hours worth of work, <laughs> and I'm keeping count of all this. But there we go. Next step is to get the top jointed, and we'll start decorating the rosette. 